I'm Superman. This is the story of three amazing children. <laughs> they're at the cutting edge of the fight against cancer, and they're putting their lives on the line so we can all benefit from new ways to treat the disease in the future. I'm always worried about her because she's my sister. I don't want anything to happen. We've followed them over two years through the best of times chile, chile, chile con carne. <laughs> and the worst of times. It's really horrible to see your own brother having to go through that, especially at such a young age. The children are all being given experimental treatments that may eventually mean we can beat cancer forever. I'm going to have a bone marrow transplant and lots and lots of medicine. But until that time comes, it's one day <laughs> and one victory at a time. I'm a bit better. Yeah, you're getting better. A little bit better. Let's collect all the callers, Chloe. Chloe lives with her mum and dad and brother James in central London. Who's that one? Mummy, pig and daddy. She's a very happy little girl who's just celebrated her third birthday. But recently, she's been unwell. I knew something wasn't right. She was just too ill in herself for me to think it was something minor. Um, and going and seeing lots of doctors sending me back home. Um, I kept thinking, I, I know her too well and it's, it's not right. She shouldn't be lying here looking so ill. And push, push it down. down. Push down, Chloe. You press down, Chloe. Yeah, Clever give it a Eventually, after a couple more trips and an ultrasound, um, we were told that she had a tumour. Quick, 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 Turn quick, 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 Oh, nearly. Further tests revealed every parent's worst nightmare. The cancer had spread or metastasized throughout her body. Clever girl. I kind of knew it was bad news, but you just never expect it to be quite as bad. Chloe's main cancer is a tumour that's attached to her adrenal gland above her of her kidney, and um, the metastatic side was that it was prevalent throughout her bones. Oh. Do, yellow one. You'd go into autopilot pretty much straight away. Right, OK, so we've had this news. How do we move forward? How do we get Chloe better? The family learned they have around a year of treatment ahead of them. Chloe's just finished her first round of chemotherapy and is about to go into hospital for a major operation. Come on, darling, you're going to want more toys than that, honey. Toys, colouring, DVD, DVD. Uh, Think about some of your new toys that you got for your birthday. Oh, I forgot my pyjamas. We need to take with you important dishes. James is putting holy water in there now. <laughs> what? Oh, James, you are hilarious. Being a big brother is really nice because she gives me big cuddles and, um, well, it's just upsetting now that, um, why her, why is, she, why is she chosen to have cancer? It's just upsetting. Would you like to bring your mini bananas because you're having a whole goodie bag, Chloe? Her operation will take a whole day from like nine o'clock to seven o'clock in the evening. What they want to do is take out the um, lump in her tummy, which is the actual tumour. Let's go. Let's go. We're not ready to go yet. Surgery is probably the most petrifying part for me but then also the part that says it's taken it away. Um, and I guess the... You want it to happen, but you don't. I have a home like now. I'm thinking, I don't want this bit to end. So should mummy stay tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday, and daddy stay on Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah? 
And I'll come home and do the washing and ironing. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Good plan. Yeah. <laughs> come on then, hold Mummy's hand. Chloe's cancer, called neuroblastoma, is one of the deadliest of all childhood cancers, with only around two in five children with Chloe's type of disease surviving. My dad said last night that children, children cancers don't get much worse than what Chloe's got. It makes me feel upset and angry, um, scared, worried, stuff like that. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Mum. Hey, good boy. Sophie is 12 and lives near Heathrow with her mum. She was first diagnosed with leukaemia when she was just two. Sophie's now been living with cancer so long that she has tubes surgically implanted to make it easier for drugs to be given and blood taken. How long does it take? A long half hour, darling. It should go exactly half hour. Childhood leukaemia has a high survival rate, with four out of five children being cured completely. But for some, the standard treatment just doesn't work, and the cancer comes back. I love how that does that, how it sucks it in. We went through treatment for two and a half years, and then I get a call from our local hospital um, telling me on the phone Friday afternoon that he'd come back. So you can imagine what state I was in. Again, we went through treatment for another two and a half years. It was just part of life. And, and our motto's always been happy, 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 fun, 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 always smile. It's just got us through. She's got so many memories. you got one and you got direction. Put them together, one direction. But the cancer came back a third time when Sophie was ten and then returned again in less than a year. You put them together, who never did Where are you getting these words from? <laughs> when I told her the fourth time, she was totally devastated. And she just said, I don't want to die, mummy. I don't want to die. So what did you think when your mum said it was back? Not again. <laughs> um... But I dealt with it, like I have all the other times. Mm, yeah. Of course, I was upset, but there's something that we can do, so do it. <laughs> Why do you have to have the designer one? And I have to. It was my Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck on your ponytail. The two options that faced Sophie were just to have treatment for the pain or to fight the cancer by taking part in a trial of a completely new type of therapy. They're not all going to fit on the tray. We gave her the options and straight away, without any thought of it at all, she said, I want to go on the trial, Mummy. She said about it's a clinical trial and stuff like that, but I didn't want to read the thing. I just wanted to go ahead. I didn't want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Although their cancers are totally different, both Sophie and Chloe are going to receive an experimental treatment called immunotherapy. I think you've done a brilliant job, actually. It'll make me better, hopefully. I might not say the same at work tomorrow. I don't get scared. Unless there was a huge needle that was coming. <laughs> Maybe I would. I'm not scared. Yeah. She just takes every day as it comes. She is a fighter and I pray to God that this clinical trial will work. At the moment, the leukaemia is at bay, which is what it needs to be before they, they start conditioning her. So, you know, so everything at the moment is going to plan. Enjoy your cake. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have made more. What have you got? Homemade play doh. Thanks. Do you notice how much you appreciate play doh? What are we going to make from it? Or are you just giving it out to everyone? Oh, thank you. I'm going to give him a kiss. He might want some cookie. Chloe's come to Great Ormond Street for surgery to remove the tumour that's wrapped around her kidney. But we'll need to do a, um, another heart scan, check that that's okay. And then, given that Chloe's kidney function is already a little on the poor side, we want to be very sure that in the surgery we don't do anything that would damage the kidneys because we'd want to preserve her kidney function as much as possible for the high-dose chemotherapy that she has next. After she's had her surgery and recovered, we need to get her ready for the high-dose chemotherapy as quickly as she's fit enough to have it. Great. OK. How are the what sits? <laughs> high five. <laughs> high five. <laughs> this is some excellent spontaneous high-fiving. <laughs> I'm going to cuddle. Oh, you are such a... God, so many hours left. And this shouldn't be a clock in here. The clock, this clock's absolutely everywhere. I think that's what's hard. Yeah. This is all tumour. It's very extensive. What I'm a bit worried about is the tumours around both kidneys. A bit further up, that's what I'm more worried about. The tumour wraps around all of the blood vessels, like concrete, around pipes. And we have to heal the tumour off the blood vessels. This is obviously one of the biggest milestones in her journey, her treatment plan. So, as much as nervous and anxious, it's a day we want it to, you want to happen, you know. You just need to be careful here, because I just don't want to damage that kidney. Chloe doesn't know she's very ill, but she doesn't think beyond that and to her it's it's normal it's only in a few years time when she's older we can explain to her actually you're you're quite special and what you've been through is, is huge it's um, a little bit more extensive than the scan suggested there's certainly tissue below where the scan suggested there was tissue. OK. That's the tumour. Hello, Bobby. Hello, right. Mummy got your hand. Oh. Really good. We can't at the moment, baby. It's all right. You okay, though? <laughs> Not yet, soon. Yeah? Can I eat? <laughs> the operation went very well. Everything's out, as far as I can see. Fantastic. Okay. Both kidneys are pink and healthy and everything else looks fine. Brilliant. Thank you so much. She's done well. Brilliant. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Such a good girl. I know. So you can get the thermos? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Fabian is 11, and like Sophie, he's been fighting leukaemia all his life. He's always had a close bond with his sister Cassia, but recently she's given him some of her bone marrow to help him fight the disease. Being his donor has made us close. So... I know we've got a special connection that no one else has. <laughs> I wish I could fly. Yeah, where would you fly? I'd fly to the country where they make Lego. Oh, Fabian. They make Lego everywhere. No, they don't. The, 
main place where they make Lego is Denmark. Is that in Germany? So-called killer T-cells have been taken from Cassia's blood and are being re-engineered in the lab to fight Fabian's leukaemia. They like genetically modify the T-cells to go and kill the leukaemia cells off. And then they send it back and they give it to him and that will hopefully try to give him a better immune system and kill off his leukaemia cells. I wanted to get you a present for you giving yeah, your you cells to me. Aw, Fabian, that's really sweet. I got 15 pounds. Aw. <laughs> well, I ain't, I ain't spending my whole 15. <laughs> I have to spend my money wisely. Fabian. Look, it's a bit of a muddle. How do I fold a jacket? Well, maybe fold it in half. <laughs> is that folded? I call it dumping folded. Fabian is heading back to Great Ormond Street to receive Cassia's modified T-cells. It's just the latest of hundreds of trips to hospital over the last eight years. Can I have a kiss? Mm. <laughs> OK, darling, you'll be fine. That's it. It's just a journey, you know, it's just a long journey that, <laughs> you know, you... You're just sort of on. It's like getting on a rocket to the moon. You can't, you, you can't sort of choose to get off it. You know, you, you're, you're on that journey with the entire family and he has three uh, siblings and it's been hard for them. It's not been easy. When he relapsed, I pretty much lost any sense of behaviour and I just, you know, I remember punching the wall uh, because it just was self, a sense of being unfair uh, that he, you know, should have to suffer this again. Bye bye. OK, bye right then. Seatbelt. But then our consultant said, we could put you forward for the immunotherapy trial at Great Ormond Street. When I've had Cassie's blood cells, this is the last time I'll be going into hospital. And then I'm free. Free, man. Give me five. I'm going to be free. Ah. You tend to grab these things as a sort of, here's a, here's a ray of hope. You know, here was, he was something that sounded very, very exciting. And when she described it, um, OK, there hadn't been any patients through. I mean, there was no evidence, <laughs> which was a little bit frightening. Um, but. Even so, it sounded like it was really um, exciting science. Ow. So you've been told you're going to get some important medicine today, aren't you? Why have I got these? Because I need to do your odds. I'm better. <laughs> I'm a bit better. Yeah, you're getting better. A little bit better. I want to get better. Of course you want to get better. Is it going down? Not yet. It's just a fortnight since Chloe's operation and already she's had a week of chemotherapy so strong it could kill an adult. Even though the original tumour has been removed, her cancer had already spread and is so dangerous that only the most aggressive treatment can save her. Dad, it's special medicine. It is, darling. It's a special medicine. There's so many things that happen and consent form after consent form and all the risks you're told about. It's scary when you're sort of told all these things. You're thinking, like, as parents, you're to protect and you feel like you're not protecting. No. We're going to just do it once and take it off, OK? No. Do it. Mommy, do it. No, don't do it, Daddy, don't. No, no. Do I don't want to do it. If you let Daddy put that on now... No, in a little while, in a little I while. might have... You have to do one now, baby. I'm doing a little while. Every ten minutes. No, I'm doing a little while. You go and get the egg. Go and get the egg. 
<laughs> Come on. Just tired. Thank you, thank you for me. No, we're going to do it in a minute. Thank you. Put it back, Willie. Put it back, put it back. Listen, listen, no shouting. Put that back. All right. You beep him, babe. Sophie is also in Great Ormond Street having chemotherapy, but because her immune system is being wiped out, the nurses and her doctor, Professor Persis Amrolia, have to wear masks when they come into her sterilised and airlocked room. Hi, Persis, you're all right. Hello, hello. So you're all settled in. Your room looks very nice. You've got the most glamorous room in the ward. Are you feeling well? OK, just a bit tired. Yes. Nice. That's part of the course. We're doing well. You're um, cracking through the uh, chemotherapy. The last of the strong drugs today. Um, and then we've got the cells frozen down, and the plan is to give those on Tuesday. And then about three weeks after the transplant, we expect the blood counts to come back up again. And then it's just a question of getting you better. And we'll hopefully get you home about six weeks after the transplant. You understand all that. You're, yeah. Uh, you're an expert now, um, aren't you? Cool. Any questions you wanted to ask? No. OK, good. All Thank the best you. for Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Fabian is also on Professor Amrolia's immunotherapy trial. And today, the genetically modified T-cells from his sister Cassia will be transplanted into him. Hello, hello. What are you up to? I'm drawing an evil creep. It is a It does look like a roll doll dog, doesn't it? You're a busy boy. All right. Listen, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second, if that's all right. The plan is to give you the special cells uh, this afternoon, fairly shortly. I'll give you a pre-med beforehand to prevent any reactions, but I don't think you'll have any reactions. Alright. You're up for this? Yeah. Good. Positive attitude. Alright. Okay, good, good. Nick, you'll be in in a second. So, how much is he getting? Five mils. Two vials of 2.6 mils each. Yeah. There's um, 52 million cells, genetically modified cells. Thank you. No, not at all. Fingers crossed, I'll keep my fingers and toes crossed for you. A variation of the immunotherapy Sophie and Fabian are going to receive is on trial in America. Early results look good, but soon after getting the special cells, the children in the US became critically ill because of the side effects and almost died. Hello. Hello. Professor Amrolia has developed a new way of modifying the cells, which won't make the patient so sick, but will hopefully still be strong enough to fight the cancer. The T-cells treatment is certainly the last option of treatment that we've been told we, we can probably have. He does know more than he lets on, and he knows what this disease can do. He actually has quite a deep maturity about it, sort of uh, almost matter of fact. You can go fast if you want. Do you know what? I have to take two minutes to do it, Fabian. It's wonderful after all this time, he's 11 and he was diagnosed at four, you know, that there's still hope for a cure. All done. Only five millilitres. Can I have a little smile puppet from you? Woohoo! That's what? it. Two weeks on and Chloe is suffering from the side effects of her treatment. Her liver is dangerously swollen. The therapy that's meant to save her life could be killing her. My tummy hurts. Oh, maybe James will make it feel better. You do see your child in discomfort and you can see that the real effects of, of what we're doing here, you know, you, 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 to try and kill the cancer, you are, you are filling them full of toxicity and you know, you, you do see the effects of that. No, Mummy, don't take me out. Where do you want to go? Take me out of here. She's genuinely a very happy child. And so the days where she's not are when it hits you as a parent that, you know, you, your child's going through something that you would never imagine. Yeah. 
Oh, she's not comfortable around her tummy. Now you can see she's swollen, isn't she? Oh, OK. I'm always thinking, I'm always a bit worried about her because um, she's my sister. I don't want anything to happen to her. I don't like to see my sister in pain, of course. I don't like to see her cry because it makes me cry. Today, Sophie is getting her bone marrow transplant, a new immune system from a donor's blood that will prepare her for the genetically modified T cells in a few weeks' time. So, how much is in the bag? Is this it... bag is 70. So, we'll get you started and then we'll start defrosting the next one. Okay? As the new bone marrow enters her blood and reaches her lungs, Sophie can smell and taste it on her breath. She uses cherry drops to mask the taste. Can you taste it yet? I'm not sure if it's the cherry drop or the thing. Yep. Usually the children can taste it before we can smell it. How long will it take? For everything to go through. So this bag will be 20 minutes and then your next bag will be another 20 minutes. When you have the bone marrow transplant, then that's a zero day. And then I think it's 35 days later, you're well enough to come home to then have the isolation at home. Hello. <laughs> I can just smell the cherry drop. Good sweets to pick. I know there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days and there'll be days where she just wants to sleep and it's just cuddles, cuddles and she'll just drift in and out of sleep. Can you smell it? What does it smell like? Sweet corn. In the garden, which striping insect is Hello Kitty pretending to be? Chloe has been struggling with an enlarged liver, but things finally seem to be improving, and for the first time in almost two weeks, she's being disconnected from the pumps that have been keeping her alive. You can have it all off for a little while, Chloe. Yay! Good. Does Melissa get a high five for that, darling? Do I get a high five? Yay! High five. Freedom! Five. Go for a walk if you want to. I'm going go on my bike. You want to go on your bike? <laughs> Daddy, go and get the bike in a minute. I'll put trousers on. Okay. Socks. Trousers and socks, got them here. Daddy's going to take me. We seem to have turned a corner yesterday where it all seems to be going back to normal. Can Good I girl. Again? Really nice to have her off of these for 24 hours. She will go off for a walk with all the pumps and stuff, but it's, it's not the same as feeling free, disconnected to a machine. I'm going to hold my finger. I'm a bit wobbly. Are you a bit wobbly? That's because you haven't been walking much. Should we do a little shake? We'll do some of this so we can shake off the wobbles. Shake, shake, shake. Are you getting all the feeling back? For the last few days, she's not felt well enough to even bother asking, taking the machine with her, so it's nice to see that she's clearly feeling up to wanting to go around, cycle around and go and annoy the nurses. <laughs> Do you want to go around and give the nurses a sticker to put on their passes? How can I put it on, on my bike? We just stop and you peel one off and you put it on their, on their badge. The quicker we get her back to sort of some normality of things we can manage at home, we know we're getting closer to <laughs> her getting out as well. See you in a minute. which is really great. It's nice to see. This is the worst thing about rabbit. Catch them. Seeing him get through some of the things he's gotten through, that's really encouraging and inspiring. He's had to, like, learn some, like, adult stuff, being in hospital and going through things that none of his friends will ever under understand, really. 
I think it's made him a stronger person, definitely. When I'd have my sister's cells, I'd decide to give them a nickname, TT cells. So that means, like, tank T cells. Because they're, like, the good cells fight the bad cells and, like, destroy them. And then as soon as they're, like, destroyed, I won't be ill anymore, which is a good thing. Because I must say, well, not be in a coffin and then, like, be dead. That'd be horrible. So that's why I call them TT cells. Rather fetching name, actually. We still have a lot of hope <laughs> that he's going to be OK. He said to me, I'm kind of looking forward to growing up and um, having... Um, having a wife and a house and a car. So he's positive about his future, which is lovely. Let's see how high you can go. OK. Each day is very precious. You know, you, you, look, you sort of think, I, I wouldn't... Um, I don't want to look back on that day or... Um, that weekend or, you know, and think, oh, if only I could have that time again, you know. We're going up in a different way. <laughs> Chloe is also doing much better. The family is at London Zoo for the day, in a brief respite from treatment before her radiotherapy begins. Hello, Daddy. Is that fun, darling? Should we go and see those penguins now? Do they look like ice cream? No. I don't think they like ice like cream. Fish. We're trying to just get back to normality before Chloe got ill. But of course it's never going to be normal until, like they can say, she hasn't got cancer. Which will, well, it's, it's not just like, bam, end of treatment, Chloe hasn't got cancer. It's like um, they have to wait a year before they can tell that she hasn't got the cancer. Bananas and pyjamas are coming down the stairs. Oh, that's a great song. Hold my hand. Ready, go! <laughs> Where's Chloe's feet gone? Having Chloe at home is really good. My dad always says to me, home isn't a house, it's us, like my family. That's home, not a house like that or that big hotel or that school. Home is in there, he's saying to me, yeah. I put it in. Right, put the lid on really quickly. That's all. Put it in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> What's it like being in the same room for weeks? I feel like a caged animal. It's like just living in your front room or living in your bedroom. You do get bored a bit though. It's day 35 and today I'm going for a bone marrow aspirate which means it will be my first time out of my room. In how long? Eight weeks. I get to move and feel the air. And you can see people. And I'll get to see people. And what, what's happening with your city cells at the moment? You're... They're not going up. Apparently we're meant to be going home in about a week according to my chart, which I've been ticking off. But that doesn't look like we well, are. You never know. Well, it, it could happen if my cells miraculously go up. If 
Like Sophie, Fabian also has to have a bone marrow aspirate, a critical test that will find out whether there are any leukemia cells still in his body. This is the one that's going to say whether or not the gene therapy has worked. So it's been quite an anxious time, really. You know, we're hoping we're going to have really good news, and the T cells have done their job, so we'll have to see now. So it's just a usual trip up to Great Ormond Street, and it, but it's. Um, it's one that's going to really, really matter. I've already had a sleep on the way here. Really? Yeah, going to be with you all the time, making sure that you're nice and safe, sweetheart. Okay? While Fabian is unconscious, a hollow needle is pushed into his hip bone and a small quantity of bone marrow is sucked out. It takes several days for the sample to be analysed. An anxious wait for the whole family. Fabian and the family have come to see Professor Amrolia to get his latest results and find out if Cassia's modified T cells are working. Come get them at on the way back. If those purses. Fine by me. I would I'd shoot a bit higher than McDonald's. I'd try for the Ritz. <laughs> okay, so I think on balance, I think overall, I'm I'm very happy. Okay. Um, the news from the last bone marrow is good. Good. Yeah. Um, got to be a little bit cautious about it, um, but we can detect the special immune cells that we made from cassia, and then the fact that, that we can see them in the peripheral blood means that they have expanded, which is fantastic, yeah. as you say. Yeah, yeah. And so the question now becomes how long these T cells are going to last, <coughs> and whether they're going to keep looking for the leukemia. And, and really, I know it's very difficult for you guys, but um, um, I guess only time will tell. Time will tell, yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Have a lovely Christmas. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm. Bit stupid. Fabian, that's not very fair how you get to know all your presents, but you're not telling me mine. Promise not to tell mine. <laughs> Pinky? Pinky It's looking as though the T cells have had an effect. You know, it's it's very early days, but it's it's positive. Is that the sweetest house you've yeah. ever seen? <laughs> he told me last night that he didn't want to die. I think I was talking to him about that. You know, not everybody lives to old age, and some, you know, some people just don't. And he just said, well, I don't want to be like that. I want to live. I'm glad that I don't have to tell him that he might not now. Because <laughs> that's what it boiled down to, really, wasn't it? How about we tip it over and then let the switch drop on? <laughs> I don't have to tell him that just before Christmas now, which was obviously my fear. It's just such good... <laughs> What we're going to do with the rest of the sweet? Yay! We're going to take this one off. We're going to keep that one on for a little bit longer. Chloe has started her immunotherapy, a six-month course of antibodies intended to stimulate her immune system to fight the cancer. When I grow up, I'm going to be a tooth fairy. When you grow up, you're going to be a tooth fairy. She's also had a test called an MIBG scan to see if there are any traces of cancer left. Let's just talk about the MIBG scan. There had been this little lesion in the sternum, and on the most recent MIBG, we can't see it. So that's very good. So the most recent scan is normal, which is really good, because that was the point that we were hoping to get at. That's brilliant news. That's really, yeah. really good news. Um, it's really just a question now of doing everything we can or that we know of to prevent it from coming back. And the things that work for that are the immunotherapy. 
We do know that the chances of it coming back are quite high, and that's why we've been, why I particularly have been, Mummy's just a little bit stronger than Daddy, a bit, bit anxious the last couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah, well, I think uh, anxiety, unfortunately, is completely normal, reasonable, because we know that Chloe has extremely difficult disease and that it is very hard to treat and that there is a high risk of it coming back. Yeah. Chloe has got into complete remission and I think now we're looking at the better side of 50% chance of, of it not coming back. Yeah, well, that's, I'll take that. I'll take that to the bank. You know, yeah. Chloe, she's got her life back. You know, we can't be more thankful. We got the news that there was no neuroblastoma in Chloe's body, which was heartwarming and very exciting. I'm proud of her because she's she's so strong, even stronger than me, I think. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a fighter. Who's a big strong girl now? Me. You. That's right. <laughs> It's constantly on our mind. Chloe could have this back at any point. Jeez! <gasps> you have to put it to one side and you make every little thing as special as you possibly can so that it's a life. Cards. So I did have them, but I don't know what I've done with them. This is the glitter for the um, tables. Oh, that was handy. I didn't think that was going to turn up. So, do you want to put these up, Mum? Hi, baby girl. Hopefully, everything should go all right today. And Amy's going to come, and some of your friends from school will give you the bestest send-off, because you really deserve that baby cakes, don't you? My baby girl. Sophie's bone marrow transplant failed. Her blood counts never recovered. Her body gave up, not her mind, if that made sense. What she'd gone through for 10 years of her life, um, her, her body just couldn't do it anymore. Sophie always wanted to help other children, anything to advance medicines. So, got no regrets on going on the clinical trial. It was Sophie's choice. Unfortunately, the bone marrow didn't work, so she never got the chance to have the, the modified cells. In loving memory of Sophie Jemima Ryan Palmer, she would love us to do this. And what do we all say? Such a brave little girl. I was proud to be called her mummy. Although Sophie never got the modified T cells, other children in Professor Amrolia's study are still cancer free, proving immunotherapy has great promise for the future. So I went that one. Sadly, in Fabian's case, the T cells eventually stopped working and he passed away last November. But as one of the pioneers of the treatment, he has brought the end of cancer one step closer. In February, Chloe started a new course of chemotherapy, but her family are still optimistic that she will beat her cancer. Immunotherapy isn't a miracle cure, but it's what their hope will lead to, the sort of cure that will kill cancer. It's just fingers crossed that my little girl gets, gets what she deserves, which is a, a long life. Mm -hmm.